Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this 100% cotton dishcloth that's machine washable and dryable, very durable, very absorbent. I'm going to show you how to make this today and all you need is one little roll of this sugars and cream 100% cotton yarn. This is a two and a half ounce roll and this will give you two washcloths and an afghan crochet hook also known as a tunisian crochet hook this one is a susan bates brand it is a size 10 or 6 millimeter and a pair of scissors that's all you're going to need so to get started i'm going to show you the first step as soon as i adjust my camera Okay, so I make these about the size to fit my hand that's going to be comfortable. And then I make it a little bit bigger to allow for shrinkage. So first of all, you want to make a slip knot. You want to leave a uh, two or three inch, probably more like a three inch tail. And you just make a little slip knot. I just do a loop like that. Stick my hook through the loop. So you have a knot like that. Then I'm going to chain 22. And in case you don't know how to chain, all you do is you have your, your yarn, you're gonna take your hook, you're gonna grab your yarn and pull it through the loop, just like that, and that's one chain. So again, you're going to grab your yarn, pull it through, and that's two chains. Grab the yarn, pull it through, that's three chains. So we're going to chain to 22, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so we have 22 chains. Now we're going to take and we're going to go into this first stitch right here, right after the, um, well, this stitch right here that the loop is in, that's, that's the first stitch. You want to go into the next one. You're going to go in, you're going to grab your yarn and pull it through. And you're going to leave that loop on your hook. You're going to go into the next stitch and do the same thing and pull it through. And you're going to keep all these loops on your hook going all the way across. So again, we're going to go in, grab the yarn, pull it through. Go into the next stitch, grab the yarn, and pull it through. So we're going to go into this next stitch right here, where it looks like a little V. And we're going to pull it through all the way across. Okay, and you should have 22 loops on your hook when you get to this other end. And that would be your first row. To do the second row, you're going to grab your yarn and you're going to pull it through one loop. Just one. And then for the rest of this row, you're going to grab your yarn and you're going to pull it through the next two loops. So there's oh, one loop and two loops. Again, you're going to grab your yarn. You're going to pull it through two loops. Just like that. Grab your yarn two loops. Until all of your loops are off of your hook except for one.
just like that. And you should have something that looks like this. So now for the next row, if you see these stitches, this piece of yarn that's going up right here, all every single stitch has one of these that are going up like that. See all these that are going up. So what you want to do is you want to skip this first one right here or you yeah you don't want to go in here you want to go into you want to go into the first one here excuse me go into the first one here like that grab your yarn and pull it through so now you should have two loops and on the next one go through that piece of yarn that's going straight up and down like that Grab your yarn and pull it through. And kind of pull up on it to kind of tighten it up. Okay, and then the next one, you're going to go through this stitch right here. Pull it through. On these ones that are going straight up and down. And when you get to the other end, again, you should have 22 loops on your hook. So I'll meet you back at the other end. Okay, so I'm back at the other end. And for the last stitch, it should be the very end here. So you're going to take your hook and you're just going to go into this very last piece of yarn that's going straight up and down. Just like that. Grab your yarn and pull it through. And you should have 22 loops going across your, your crochet hook again. You should have 22 loops. Then for the next row, it's to repeat. I'll go over that with you again. Grab your yarn, pull it through one loop. And then grab your yarn and pull it through the next two loops. And again, grab your yarn, pull it through two loops. All the way across. And what you're making is you're making this fabric. And it's um, going to be tight woven like this is when you're done. I like these because there's no holes in them. There's no way if you happen to be hand washing knives, it protects your fingers from going through any holes in your stitches, like if you were doing bigger stitching. So I'm going to finish this row, grabbing the yarn, pulling it through the next two loops all the way across until I get to the other end, leaving me with one loop. All right, so we've made it to the other end. Get some more yarn here. And in case you wanted to know, the color of this yarn is blueberry. All right, so now you can see a little bit here. So you're going to go into this first one from your hook, not this one. 
put this next one from your hook. You're going to go in there just like we did before. And we're going to grab this yarn and pull it through there and kind of pull it up a bit to make it tight all the way across. Okay, and I'm going to finish going all the way across and I'll meet you at the other end. Okay, so we're at the other end and again we have 22 loops going across our hook. We chained 22 to start our foundation. So every time we get to the end of this row or going this direction, you should have 22. If you chained a different amount then you would have that same amount whatever you chained to start with is how many loops you should always have on your hook when you go this direction on your uh, washcloth so one more time i will show you how to go backwards to get all of these loops off your hook when you get to the end you just grab your yarn pull it through the first loop just one loop and then for the rest of the way across, you're going to grab your yarn and pull it through two loops all the way across. Sometimes the stitches get a little tight. And that's okay because then it's going to end up being tight woven. And just remember these washcloths will shrink a little bit because they are. 100% cotton, but they do an amazing job. I have some that are maybe five years old and I still use them to wash my dishes. They last a long time. And uh, again, one of these rolls of yarn will give me two washcloths and they're usually about $3 a roll. They might even be more than that now because of the price of everything going up. But the last time I bought some of this yarn was about November of 2022. Um, one of the stores that I go to called Bymart, in case any of you are familiar with Bymart, had this yarn on sale for $1.99 a roll. So I thought that was a really good deal. So I bought probably a dozen rolls and I'll probably never have to buy any more of this yarn for the rest of my life because these last a long time and um, I'm always making them to keep up. They're great gifts to make. So one more time, I'll show you how to go back the other way. You want to skip this first one going up and down and into the next one from your hook. Grab your yarn, pull it through to get that loop on your hook all the way across. Grab the next one, pull it through. All these stitches that are going up and down is where you want to put your hook in like that. Grab your yarn and pull it through. And you just keep working like that back and forth until you get it the size that you want it. So I'm going to work on this for a while and get a few more rows put on here. And then I will come back and show you how to finish this off. Okay, so I have about 19 rows here. And this is going to be about big enough for me. I do the hand test, meaning I just measure it by putting my hand on it as if I were wiping the table down or something to see if it's going to be comfortable for me or do I need it to be a little bit bigger, um, allowing for a little bit of shrinkage, mind you. But this is going to work for me. If it shrinks a little bit, it'll be fine. So I'm going to show you how to finish this off now when you get to the end 
If you want to keep going to make it a little bit longer, you can. But when you get to the point of wanting to finish it off, I'll show you how to do that. Get some more yarn here. All right, so I pulled my loop out really big so nothing gets pulled out. My loop back in there. Okay, so now what we're going to do to finish it off is we're just going to go into this next uh, this next thread here that's going up and down like we've been doing. And we're going to grab our yarn and pull it through like we've been doing. And then we're going to grab the yarn again and we're going to pull it through both loops like that. And then we're going to go into the next one and do the same thing. I'm going to go in there like this. I'm going to grab our yarn. And we're going to pull the yarn through two loops. All the way across. All right. And that's it. Then... What I do is I chain two. So again, grab my yarn, pull it through the loop. One, again, two. And I take my scissors and I will cut a little tail off about like that, a couple inches long. And then I just pull it out like that and pull it tight. Just like that. And then I will come back. I'm going to pause this and I'll come back with a yarn needle and show you how to hide these strings. So I have here a yarn needle. It's a number 16. So it's got a really big eye. And what I do is I will take this little thread and I kind of wrap it over the top of this needle to kind of pull it tight. And then I'll push that folded yarn in this eye. Flip it over. And then I'll just go through. Oh, I get a good handle on it. Like that. Like that. And that, that's about all you do. And then you have yourself a nice dishcloth. To make these smaller, I've made them smaller with some scraps and turned them into coasters to put your drink on. They're very absorbent because they're cotton. I also have a um, Swiffer sweeper, the, the Swiffer Wet Jet, the purple one, and um, the one that you buy solution with and stuff. And I have made these dishcloths about this wide, but maybe twice as long to make my own Swiffer pads. It saves money. You don't have to keep buying the pads and you don't have to buy the um, solution either that fits in your mop. Uh, what I do is I just make my mop water with the, the cleaner that I put in my mop water. And then with these that I've made for my Swiffer, I just you know use these and I dip it in my mop water, wring it out. And the bottom of the Swiffer has those little sharp pokey things on the mop head to hold the pads, the, the pads that you buy at the store. And they grab onto this yarn stuff and they, wait, they make great pads for your Swiffer sweeper. And I just do the same width across and I just keep crocheting it to make it longer to fit the mop head of my Swiffer sweeper. They save money. By doing that, these are machine washable, and if it's a Swiffer pad, I would just make it longer, and then I just throw it in the washing machine with all my cleaning towels, 
and uh, be done with it. So I hope you were able to um, follow my instruction on how to make this dishcloth. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you are making that your own dishcloths now because I just love these machine washable and dryable. They, they just, they, I like them. I like them. I would rather use these than sponges or even the store-bought dishcloths. These I really like. So um, give it a try and let me know in the comments uh, how you like them or if you were able to follow my instruction because I do want to know. I had my laptop aimed down kind of low so you could see my hands and um, I hope that you were able to see what I was trying to show you. So until next time, um, have a good evening and I will see you back here next time on Survive With What You Know. Bye.